Pressure reducing valves are designed to reduce the pressure at the standpipe outlet, which is a bit counterintuitive, but there's a good reason. Why? Well, the fire pump is set to pump to the top of the building. It doesn't adjust for where the fire is. Let me draw a quick diagram here and show you how. Show you what. So we've got a 33-story high-rise building. According to our pump math, the fire pump down here needs to pump all the way to the top. So our pump math says 32 floors, because we don't have the bottom one, times 40 kPa is 1280. Plus our 800 equals 2000. KPA. So it takes 2080 kPa in order to get the correct pressure to the top of the building. If the fire pump is putting out 2080 kPa, no matter where the fire is, then if we have a fire down on the first floor, we're going to get the fire pump putting out 2080 kPa. Now we take a little bit of friction loss off of that, let's say 70 kPa. And we're left with 2010 APA at the stem type, which is way too much for us to handle safely. So, what do we do about this? How does it affect us? Well, if everything works properly, the fire pump kicks in, and all the valves are set properly, and everything is working as designed to do then nothing. Everything's, everything's fine. We get the correct pressure at the standpipe outlet, we hook up, we put the fire out, everything's good. But it's when things don't work as they're designed, the fire pump doesn't work, or the valves are improperly set, that's when, obviously, we need to know what we're doing how to handle it. So, the first step is we need to learn to identify pressure-reducing valves when we go into a standpipe equipped building, and if we do find them, we need to communicate that to command and the pump operator so that they can come up with a plan for how to deal with it. So if the pump quits, and it's up to us to supply the building with water from our fire engine through the fire department connection, then we need to replicate what the fire pump would do, which means we need to calculate the pump to the top floor, not the fire floor. So in this case, we calculate to the 33rd floor, we figure out 2080 kPa. Another option is to adjust or defeat the, the device. So let's take a look at some of the pressure reducing valves that we find here in Calgary. So this top one on the left is a Giacomini valve. And it's a factory, well, sorry, it's, a, it's an automatic valve that is fire ground adjustable. Okay, so this is what the big the valve looks like. And then uh, if you zoom in here, just to the right of it, you can see that there's a, an adjusting collar here. And uh, if you have a, a rod that's about 3 eighths of an inch in diameter, or the hole there is 3 eighths of an inch in diameter, it's designed to have a rod stick into that hole, and you turn that, that adjusting collar to adjust the pressure. So if we have the appropriate tools, we can adjust that in the, stand, in the stairwell at the standpipe during the fire. The next one to the right of it is, uh, is a device that just restricts how far the valve opens. And if you look, there's a little rod right here, and right there is uh, a little bolt that if we have an Allen wrench, we can remove that rod, and then it, that valve becomes a normal uh, standby outlet valve, and we can open it all the way and get whatever pressure we need. This uh, next one to the right, it has an orifice plate, you can see right here. And that plate is designed to be popped out. We can force it out, so by sticking a, a set of channel lock pliers or the, the pick of our halligan or an axe or something like that, we can pry that, that orifice plate out of there. Okay? So that's not, it's, it's set at the factory. Um, it's not adjustable, but it is defeatable. Okay, this next one down for moving clockwise, uh, that's an Elkhart brass factory set pressure reducing valve, and it is not fire ground adjustable. 
the only way we can deal with that valve is to, is to pump into it at the correct pressure, um, at the higher pressure, so that it reduces it down to the pressure that we need. So we need to figure out um, what pressure it is that, uh, that we need to hit to get to the top floor, and then it should work after that. Uh, the next one, the middle and the bottom, it's also um, designed to be adjusted on the fire ground. Um, if you look on the little inset picture there, there's a clip right here. If you remove that clip, then the valve can be opened all the way. When that clip is in there, it's set so that the clip limits how far that valve is open, and that's how it restricts the pressure. So as soon as we remove that clip, it becomes a normal valve. We can open it all the way, and we should get all the pressure we need. Now this next one, the bottom left, is a, a valve made by Zern, and it uh, it is set. It's got a big spring in there. It's an automatic valve, and there's a big spring in there that uh, that is adjustable. But this one requires um, specific tools to do it. So if we have a large adjustable wrench or a pipe wrench then we can remove this bonnet right here. And so the whole hand wheel and everything comes off. And then inside, there's a, there's a big spring with a nut that, that holds tension on that spring. And then we need an inch and a sixteenth deep socket to go over, um, to go over the bolt and, uh, and hit that, that uh, nut. And if we turn it clockwise, then we can increase the pressure that comes out of that valve. So to recap what we've learned, number one, when you go into a building, with sand pipes, a tall building, we need to identify whether there are or are not pressure reducing pipes. Number two, we need to notify the command and the pump operator of the existence of pressure reducing pipes. And number three, we need to adjust our pump map up to the top of the building. And four, we need to adjust or defeat the device. If you'd like more info on pressure reducing valves, there's a good book by David McGrail called Firefighting Operations in High Rise and Standpipe Equipped Buildings. Also, I provided a link to a fire engineering article that talks about pressure regulating devices. And a quick Google search will uh, get you tons of information. All the manufacturers' websites have, uh, have lots of good information on how their particular valves operate. There's lots of information out there. Thanks for watching.